Okay, everyone, here's our first example. So lots of text here, sorry about that. It says, attention test was conducted on a 1.97 inch wide, okay, by 0.375 inch thick, that's probably important too, specimen of a nylon plastic. A four inch gauge length was marked on the specimen before load, okay, so we know we have the specimen, it's got this four inch gauge, and in the elastic portion of the stress strain curve, and an implied load of P equals 6,000 pounds, the elongation was 0 0.023 inches. And the contraction of the bar width was measured at 0 0.004 inches. Okay, so here is our gauge length right there. There is the height of it, or wide width of it. It's 0 0.375 inches thick. We applied a force, it got longer, and it got thinner. And we want to know the elastic modulus E, Poisson's ratio, as well as the shear modulus G. Well, let's see if we can do it. But before then, I'm going to give you a chance to try it on your own. So for these two at least, you're probably going to need to go back and look over our slides just to get those equations. They're not hard to use equations, um, but you'll need them for this problem. So I'm going to give you about a few minutes to try this out, then come back and see how it went. So three, two, one, and you're back. So now that you're back, you're like, wow, that went so incredibly well, or that went absolutely terribly, and I never want to try that problem again. Whichever one was you, hopefully the first one. Um, we'll do it together now. So let's try it out. First, we're going to calculate the stress. We had a load. It was over a cross-sectional area. Not too difficult. So stress is force over area. We have 6,000 pounds. We have inches squared on the bottom. And so we get PSI, which if you didn't know that, it's pounds per inch squared. That comes out to be 8,101.27. Now it also told us, if we look back on the previous slide, let's look here, we had a change in gauge length and we had an initial length. Okay, so we have an elongation and we have an initial length. Sometimes it can be good to actually write down the symbols next to the words as you read the paragraph, just so you remember what different unknowns, what variables you have, and what you know. Okay, going back here. So we calculate that, now the longitudinal strain. Remember, long, long, that's the longest direction, usually the length, long. So that would be the longitudinal strain. So it changed by 0 0.023 inches, that's over a four inch length, which gives me 0 0.005750 strains, just regular strains, not micro strains, regular strains. And what's the elastic modulus? Well, we know that these are connected because stress is equal to the elastic modulus times strain. This only works if we're in that linear section though of the curve. So we're looking at the curve, only this section right here, which is linear. Above that, it doesn't work. So I divide my stress by my strain. Remember that these units just disappear, strains don't exist and I get 1,409,000 PSI. Elastic moduli are usually big numbers, so don't be surprised if you get a big number. Okay, now I wanna um, calculate Poisson's ratio. Well, to do that, I need the lateral strain. So which direction is that gonna be along? Well, in this case, it was the 1.975 inches. And over there at the top, it was negative 0 0.004 inch. Do not forget, this got smaller, so it's a negative number. If it gets bigger, it's a positive number. And so I get negative 0 0.002025 strains. Now, perhaps you're thinking to yourself, well, that was for the, you know, kind of like the height of it, but what if we had just done this one from here to here? Well, this would have dropped proportionally, and it would have come out to be the same number. So now we calculate Poisson's ratio. So negative of the lateral strain over the longitudinal strain. Strains cancel, and you, what you see is that Poisson's ratio is just a ratio. It has no units. If you somehow magically have units at the end, something has gone terribly wrong. It comes out to be 0.35. Well, that is less than 0.5, so we're good. And now we're going to calculate the shear modulus. So G is going to be equal to our elastic modulus over twice times one plus the Poisson's ratio. 
plug it all in, we get 521,000 PSI. Now, an interesting fact about G, um, which isn't necessarily important for this, but this is you know, theoretically how much pressure it would take to move an entire plane of atoms one space, just all at once. You can see that's a massive amount of pressure. I always thought that was kind of a neat little fact. In reality, it takes much less much less pressure to move something simply because we don't usually move all the atoms at once. We do them in small spurts. So thank you for paying attention. Thank you for listening. I hope this problem went well. And if it didn't, we've got plenty more practice problems to try out. So I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.